me, I'm Chetan Sharma. We learn to live, we live to learn in what has turned out to be an unprecedented situation. With history being written across the geography of Mother Earth, and a minor virus has created a major catastrophe, making each and every one of us rewind, rethink, reset, reboot, reformat before we rebuild a new future, a new normal. In the world of higher education, the challenges are many, but the solutions are also there. They say that the only thing constant is change. And the only thing certain in a pandemic is uncertainty. Progress necessitates change. But the fact is that all change does not lead to progress. And that's what makes the situation in the higher education scenario very, very fragile. What are those changes that will help us overcome challenges, find solutions, and more importantly, create opportunities? To understand that and more, we at EduMate TV get together a platform and bring in people from all ecospheres of the education world, the parents, the students, the teachers, the vice chancellors, the educators, the educrats, the edupreneurs, to try and understand what would be the best way forward. How do we meet and greet the new normal? So welcome to another session of the class of 2020, the new normal, the candid COVID classroom. It's brought to you by a education, a company that believes in taking education ahead. And I say with great pride, it's powered by one of the best universities this country has from the land of the East, it's the Adamus University. First up, as always, we have a host of guests to speak to us on a very special topic. Today's topic assumes a higher significance, particularly in light of the new education policy in the post COVID environment. Let's take a look at who these speakers are who graced us this evening. We have a list of very special guests lined up for today's symposium. Let me introduce them one by one. First up, we have Padma Shri Advocate Ujwal Nikam, Indian Special Public Prosecutor. Mr. Nikam has done his BSc followed by law degree from KCE Society's SS Maniard Law College, Jalgaon. In his 30 years old career, he has secured 628 life imprisonment and 37 death penalties. In December 2010, Nikam represented the Government of India at a worldwide convention on terrorism held at the United Nations in New York. Mr. Nikam has received more than 65 national awards. Some of them are Best Public Prosecutor from the Citizens of Pune, Maharashtra Times Nayak of 2006 from the Citizens of Maharashtra, from the Citizens of Mumbai, Daksh Nagrik from the Citizen of Nagpur, conferred with a doctorate degree by the former President of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Azad. He was honored by Padma Shri in 2016. Welcome to our symposium, sir. Up next, we have Ms. Eshwarya Bhati. She's the additional Solicitor General of India. Ms. Bhati has done her BSc, LLB, and LLM. She has total professional standing of 22 years at the bar. Her awards and recognitions include elected twice as Secretary of the prestigious Supreme Court Bar Association, adjudged as the best student advocate of the country in the All India Moot Court competition organized by the Campus Law Center, Delhi University in 1998. She was selected for the converted Indo-Canada Youth Exchange Program in 1995 and represented India for the same in Canada. A solo, a solo glider pilot, exemplary shooter and a horse rider. Welcome to our symposium, ma'am. Up next, we have Sanjay K. Chadha, Advocate Supreme Court and High Court. Mr. Chadha has done his MCOM from SRCC, LLB from CLC Delhi University. He is currently managing partner at BSK Legal. He was awarded by many law universities and their student bodies. He is a member of Bar Council of Delhi and Delhi High Court Bar Association. Mr. Chadha is very popular amongst the young law students because of his online internship for most of the national law schools and other law schools. During this COVID period, he has provided online sessions to over 500 students of various NLUs and other law colleges. 
also conducted various webinars where judges, high court officials, members of JPC participated. Welcome to our symposium, sir. Up next, we have Dr. Srimati Chotsna Yagnik, Pro Vice Chancellor and Dean of School of Law and Justice, Adams University. Dr. Yagnik has done a BCom, LLM, PhD in law. She is teaching law for last 34 years. She was awarded with UNO Award and Human Rights Award. Her life motto is: Hard work has no substitute, and learning has no end. And her COVID mantra is: You are an exceptional career, ma'am. Such a pleasure to have you uh, on our show as, as well, uh, in person, to talk to us about uh, the opportunities in law. We pointed out several opening sense of uh, what one can do having studied law. Would you like to add to that from your professional experience? Thank you, Chetan Ji. It's uh, an absolute privilege to be speaking uh, here with you or through your medium to, to law aspirants and law students. Well, um, like you introduced in the beginning, I have I have 22 years of standing at the bar and I can give you the perspective of a litigation lawyer because that is all that I have ever done ever since I finished two years studying law. And, uh, you know, as a lawyer also, it is not just what we understand as a traditional concept of a lawyer that exists today, even in a lawyering, in a litigation, from a litigation perspective, the, uh, the opportunities uh, uh, that are available for uh, younger lawyers or, you know, lawyers who are practicing, they're, they're immense. Traditionally, we just had, you know, the traditional uh, fields of law, which was the criminal law, which was, there was a broad civil law and constitutional law practiced in, uh, you know, constitutional courts and essentially everything used to be amalgamated around it. But we are today looking at specialized litigation. There are tribunals which have, uh, uh, which have been set up in almost all areas of litigation, different aspects of law. So there are dealing from landlord tenant cases to matrimonial cases, to company law cases, debt recovery tribunals, armed forces tribunals, national green tribunals. So there are electricity disputes. There is a specialized tribunal. There is a specialized court available for every specialized kind of litigation and these are Mind you, these are very, very technical uh, and fact-based fields uh, of litigation, you know, uh, and, and if you want to make a, your presence felt or if you want to make an inroad into those kind of litigations, it is, uh, it, it requires some kind of, uh, you know, extra uh, qualification, extra, uh, extra inclination to get into those areas. But having said that, the traditional role of a lawyer is not just a person who, uh, you know, not not just a, a lawyer who picks up his brief and goes and argues his matter in the court. It was it took it was a young lawyer who was thrown out of a jail in South Africa who who stood up and led the whole country into its freedom. Lawyers uh, have played a very important role. Uh, they they have almost been like social engineers. They are like social doctors. They are like social teachers, social tailors. So the interaction with the society of a litigation lawyer is a is a it's a very intense process. People don't come to lawyers in their happiness. They, they, lawyers are absolutely the last resort that people want to go to because nobody wants, to, nobody comes to, in India, there's no luxury litigation. People don't come to courts happily. Uh, you, don't, you don't see of, uh, you know, somebody's branch, neighbor's branch com coming into your house so you uh, go litigate about it. No, that's not the kind of litigation that happens in practice in India. It's the, it's absolutely the last resort where, you know, where, where there is a, a violation of uh, fundamental rights, there is an apprehension of violation of fundamental rights or any other constitutional or legal, legal rights being violated, that actually forces people to come to litigation. Has COVID changed, changed much about litigation? I can tell you from the COVID perspective, things have undergone a massive change in the form of the way we are conducting matters and the way we are having conferences, client dealings, you know, courts through virtual mediums ha has become the order of the day. And it's, it's not like technology was earlier not getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting harmonized in law. Technology was getting harmonized, but it was too slow, too cumbersome. And there was almost like a resistance from, uh, from the system to ingrain too much technology. To give you an example in the Supreme Court, where, which is my primary place of practice, uh, you know, we had... Uh, e-filing which was going on in the in supreme court for at least the last two decades but it just it was just going on in an experimental basis now it doesn't take something like an e-filing to be experimented for two decades for it to become a reality but covid comes 
it's a huge challenge. It's a huge, huge challenge, definitely. I mean, it's turned our world upside down, but it has also brought many opportunities. The way in, uh, technology has been uh, you know, integrated in our systems, uh, the way we are holding courtrooms, our client meetings, you know, our research, et cetera, all that was already there. But these, these, uh, this technological integration with litigation has thrown up uh, definitely new and emerging areas. You see the traditional lawyers, people who are in litigation, uh, they are not so familiar with the technological front of it. So it takes, uh, it, for them, it's almost like a mind barrier or so. So, uh, you know, they, they need help of uh, these intermediaries or, you know, uh, uh, their colleagues or junior lawyers who need them to assist with the technology. I also see a lot of uh, uh, legal entrepreneurs, so to speak. A lot of these young uh, law graduates are taking to very interesting uh, technological based and software based solutions, uh, you know, in, in the back, uh, you know, like housekeeping for a lawyer's office, uh, whether it is about legal software, whether it is about filing your, you know, your client meetings, your, your briefs, you know, converting them into digital, di uh, digital format, etc. That is going to be the order of the day. I don't think the COVID period will go sooner or later, it may last a little longer than but then it is going to go. And what is important is that the learnings of the COVID period in terms of amalgamation of technology are, is something that is going to carry forward in the next, uh, in the next era post COVID. Law education will continue to be something that fascinates, uh, you know, th that excites the younger generation. Rule of law is like Yagnik Ma'am mentioned, rule of law is something that no uh, civilized society can do without. And the uh, an edu education in law actually prepares you to be a better citizen of the country, no matter what you choose to do with your legal education after that. Uh, well, absolute beautifully put in terms of your, your practical experience. And I think that point about legal entrepreneurship is brilliant. Uh, it's so relevant. And we're seeing that almost in every single field where you know uh, the, the established people are outsourcing activities, uh, particularly when it's to do with tech to a junior lot of people who, who are building these VLOs, virtual legal offices uh, to work, not just in this country, you can do that even for, for uh, lawyers overseas, because you know India still uh, has the labor uh, arbitrage advantage. So thank you for highlighting that. Uh, thank you for that opening statement. Sanjay Chadda is also joining us. Uh, Sanjay has been a, a brilliant advocate at law, but he's also been far more nuanced uh, in, in educating people for law. He does this with a passion, and he does this as a philanthropy, which makes it such a beautiful mix. And I salute you for what you do, Sanjay. Tell us, what are the opportunities that you feel in the new environment? Uh, thank you very much, Chetan. And I really feel uh, really uh, honored to be here at your platform today. Law was almost, you know, all the time it was, uh, especially uh, in last two decades, I must say, it was one of the most, uh, you know, sought for uh, profession for younger generation. We have seen it. And that is the reason, as Yagnik Ma'am was saying, that a lot of institutes, law, uh, legal law schools have come up, national law school, et cetera, et cetera, including our own uh, Admus Institute, as we are uh, seeing that. We have seen that in uh, after doing law, Litigation was, as Yagnik Ma'am has said, litigation, corporate, uh, uh, judicial services, and of course she mentioned legal journalism. She mentioned about uh, uh, LLM and then PhD and then doing law teaching. Other than that, uh, Ashwarya just has mentioned legal outsourcing is one, the new dimension which we have seen. So these were, I would place them as uh, traditional ones, uh, traditional uh, things which uh, were there in the profession, which uh, pre-corona, if I may say so, they were very, very much existing there. But, and uh, of course, in the law field, we have seen that there are special, specialized fields like environmental law, IPR. So people are specializing in that and working that we all know. But as I call this period, Corona Kal, each one of us are affected. 
about a month back, I was reading this particular thing, which I'm going to share with you is in Times of India, there was an article that in lockdown period, which went for over 60 days, uh, a total loss of 20,000 crore rupees was there for the law. Uh, so you can very well understand that this is just about the legal profession. The entire world is getting ready for the recession. We all know that. And we do not know. I, we, 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 I, I really uh, say this, that yes, this period will be certainly be over very soon, very fast. But certainly the, the time to come is little difficult. Similarly, it is difficult for each one of us, as far as the lawyer community is concerned, for them also, uh, we have seen that it will be difficult. All sectors are suffering because of this and have suffered and it has its own rolling effect, which, which will be there in future. The other day, somebody, somebody was saying that this is the worst year as far as the economy is concerned in the last 70 years of our um, uh, progress, if I may say so. Now, during this COVID period and post-COVID period, there will be a lot of changes which we'll see. As uh, Yagdik Ma'am was saying, many contracts are to be relooked. Many contracts are to be seen. Employment, com uh, employment contracts, where whether on the same salary you are ready to keep the people or not. Lease agreement, where the tenant is ready to pay the length, uh, rent or not. How much he has to pay. We have seen several webinars uh, on force major clause. Renegotiation of contract is going to be one of the big field, which, which is going to be there in the coming time. The effect of Corona has, ob we have to incorporate in the contracts now. The, there is a need of redrafting of uh, these contracts. You know, if we talk about the industries, you talk about airlines, you you talk about tourism, you talk about hotel industry, and many more. They are really suffering. What will happen to them? All the new contracts, if I have taken a premises or rent, uh, and my shop, my, uh, my, my office is closed for four months, how can I pay to the uh, landlord? Right. There is a Paradigm shift, I must say, but this has given a opportunity for this profession, for the profession in which we are, I am. The role of government is also very important. We have seen that internationally, many governments are doing many things. We have seen advisories are issued by our government, not, uh, not to, you know, to pay full wages. Then these advisories are taken back also. We have seen this and we, I remember one of the judgments, very recent judgment of Supreme Court, where Supreme Court has said that, uh, you know, as far as the industry is concerned, employee industry need workers, workers need industries. You sure. please settle it down, settle yes. on your own. So I see lawyers have now great opportunities. What are the important areas which are there where you know, we have to we have to really uh, see and ad adoptability is to be there. We have right. to adopt to the new system. How uh, uh, you know, work from home, office less working. True. We have to adopt that. I think a new culture is to be adopted by us. Absolutely. That is that is most important for us. I, I think what they, what they say you've got to adapt, then you've got to adopt, and then you become adept at it. Correct. Uh, so thank you for that, Sanjay. We'll, we'll come back to you because you've got a lot of questions now coming your way. So we're not going to let you go that easily. I mean, you, you've said the good part. Now is the tough one. Let's get, it's always easy to, I think, to argue in the court of law. Very difficult to convince young students as to what they want to do because their minds are far sharper than what we know. So let's go across to this question. Swati, over to you. 
Absolutely. Uh, our first set of questions are from Pratham Jain and Ankit Kumar. And Pratham wants to know, during these times, is law still a highly paid profession? And Ankit wants to know, what is the best way to study or prepare for better rank in CLAT and LSAT? All right, so I'm going to get Sandeep to answer the first thing because he's, uh, he's very clued in on, on the commerce of education and the commerce of careers, Sandeep. Uh, you've been a master of that, apart from several other things, to understand the value proposition uh, you know, on the table for, uh, for students and for, for careers. So is law a good and a well-priced career option is the question. Uh, would you please answer that for us? Well, good evening, uh, Chetan. And it's a lovely uh, uh, gathering that we see. And uh, I think uh, today's discussion is going to be making us uh, more rich in terms of understanding law as a profession, because people from the profession are there, educators are there, like Josta Ma'am and uh, Ripon is there. Uh, Sanjay sir spoke very well from the heart, I can understand. And uh, those are lovely quotes. And uh, I think uh, law as a profession, as I always mean, if you need a doctor to survive, you need a lawyer also to survive. Because this is something which is very, very, and very much integral part of our life. And as Josta Ma'am started off, law is there from your birth till death. There is nowhere you can leave law aside. In fact, it's and even the after death. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so don't, don't, the don't. laws that you have in terms of <laughs> litigation post death. Uh, so that, that comes after. But right. for an individual, it starts from birth till death. I, I, I personally feel it that way. And it's a huge field of opportunities. See, law, which was there, say, suppose when we were doing our studies, that time law, people feel that I want to become a lawyer. I have to go to court. I have to do litigation. But today, law has taken a completely different paradigm shift when we talk about specialization. So we are talking of cyber law and uh, with COVID, which is a blessing in disguise to the education segment. And today is the right time when the new education policy has got you know, published, where we see that the education tomorrow is not going to be the same what we had you know, experienced. So I think there's a lot of difference which is going to make our life. And this young generation, which is there, about 100 odd people who are there in this uh, particular forum. You need to take it in a very, very positive stride. And where I always mention that embrace the future because future has everything which is technologically aligned. Now comes when you're talking about a profession about what is going to be the remuneration or what is the effect. You know, I mean, that, that where the question lies. Today, a lawyer standing up in a court and gives or deliberates on a particular topic. I don't know how many of us know what can be the highest remuneration. I mean, Aisharia is there who can speak about it. She is into this trade. Sanjay sir is there. He can speak about it. But I think it is infinite. It depends on how you have established and how equipped are you with your education in terms of knowing the law properly and how you litigate or how you deliberate in the court. That's very important. That's one part of it when you become an advocate or a lawyer and you stand up. But there are other options today. Like if I talk about a corporate lawyer, Today, with the demand of the society and the situation that we are in, there will be a lot of demand which will come from the corporate side because there are a lot of legalities, there are a lot of new rules which is coming in, which is getting incorporated, whether it is cyber, whether it is forensic, or whatever fields you look at. So it becomes very important. So there is a huge demand there. So it, I can say that today, a person who is studying law 
should forget, which Josna ma'am rightly started off this discussion, should forget that I am studying law to become a lawyer. That's not the area. There's an entire world of corporate entity which is there, standing to good person who will give advice in law, which will make that corporate shine, stand up and give opportunity. So if you look at, in terms of law as a career, whether it is going to fetch you, yes, you are a doctor, you know what are the specialization that you need to do. If you do it right, you can take it forward. And, you know, the sky is the limit when it comes to remuneration. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Sandeep. Of course, uh, opportunity is immense. And when there are opportunities, there will be demand. When there is a demand, the law of economics says there will be a price at hand. So be rest assured, there will be money to be made if that is your intention. Uh, next question over to you, Swati. I think it's Ankit. Uh, yes, it's uh, uh, no, uh, uh, which uh, I'd like you to answer that there's a large number of advocates, she says, in the court. Well, uh, and as a beginner, how can I make my place in the court also help me to know how to crack the judicial service exam? Both questions very relevant, uh, very interesting. Ishwarya, over to you. Well, um, I think we need to get one thing very, very straight that when we enroll to be um, you know, to be students of law. We are actually enrolling to be students of law for life. That is what it entails to be a lawyer. You really, you really never stop learning. And if you think that legal education is going to prepare you for, you know, fat salaries or, you know, fat um, uh, emoluments, fat professional feces, sorry, that's not going to happen. You know, Sandeep Ji spoke about uh, really commanding feces, professional feces that are uh, th that are commanded by the top echelons of the legal community. But I must tell you one thing: everybody who commands that kind of professional fee is past the retirement age in a traditional work setup. So the best lawyers in the country are lawyers who are above the age of sixty and somewhere in the age of ninety. Of course, there are a few stalwarts that even go beyond in their you know, in their 90s, they are also, they continue to be rock stars and legal doyens of the bar. But essentially, legal profession is not instant coffee. It's not two minute noodle. It's not a quick dal chawal, if that's what you're seeking to make. Legal profession is more like a chappan bhog. You need to make all your preparations, make your marinations, get everything ready. It is going to take time because, you know, and, and also, there is no embargo at the entry stage. So there's anybody who has a law degree and enrolled with the, with the bar council can choose to come to court. Of course, there are thousands and thousands of courts in the country. There are constitutional courts at the highest levels, but there are district courts, there are trial courts, there are you know metropolitan courts, municipal courts, taluka courts. So it's, it's a beautiful web that, of courts that really covers the country. It really uh, depends on where you want to practice. There is a rush for, uh, you know, for, uh, for younger uh, generation to try and, you know, come to higher courts. But my uh, advice to everyone would be to start in a regional court, in a local court close to home, so your expenses are limited. Litigation is not something that you have to work your way through. It's, uh, you know, initial years are very tough. Of course, if you had chosen to be a gymnast or a Bollywood, Hollywood, you know, you would have started earning at the age of 13, 14, maybe 16 years of age. But your career ends at 30. Law works very, very differently. You have to get, uh, come here, stay at it, work your way through, and there's immense learning. The learning continues. There will be there is there'll be lots of opportunities and places for you to learn of what to do and what not to do. Both kinds of examples are there. And actually, the corridors of the courts are like the best of the Ivy League colleges. There is so much of experiential learning. You just need to be open to it. Uh, so understand what you're choosing. If you, if you choose to make a chappan bhog like a two minute Maggie, you're going to you know, not come out with a good product. Understand what you're choosing. It's not about you taking time or me taking time. It's about the gestation of the profession. Once we understand that, it's fine. And you know, judiciary is certainly a new, um, it's more emerging field now that you know, more and more courts are uh, there, more tribunals are coming. So legal uh, judicial officers are uh, required in all courts. And uh, our judge to population ratio is still so abysmal that we need to have more judges than judicial officers 
across the length and breadth of our country. Uh, I will take from something that uh, Vishruji just said, be curious, law follows life. If life is going to take us in the virtual medium, you know, life, uh, life is going to go on and the disputes are going to go on and dispute resolution essentially has to keep pace. So if life, if Ellen Musk, Musk uh, you know, succeeds in taking us to Mars and we have colonies and everything in Mars, you know, who knows, disputes are going to go and lawyers will be required there also. So just be open, just be curious. There is just, just be, you know, uh, change is the only, uh, only really, uh, uh, you know, only uh, awesome. mantra that is there in the legal profession. And it's up to us, you know, uh, there's an interesting saying that uh, when winds of uh, change blow, some people make walls and some people make windmills. So if you're ready to make a windmill, then uh, then you can harness the energy of the wind better. Well, that's, that's a beautiful thought to end off that. I think I love that point, which you made a brilliant point of uh, comparing with, with other professions, some where you, you start early, but you end early. And and the legal profession, you, you start, well, I wouldn't say late, but you start definitively and you keep at it. And you just like education, it's almost, you know, uh, you keep learning along the way and you keep earning along the way and you earn and learn and learn and earn. And uh, that's really the way it should be. And always in life, I always believe money has to be a byproduct. Money will always come your way. As long as you are prepared to learn and make your mark, uh, you will realize you know, sooner or later that money is just uh, just a byproduct of, of the entire the, the process uh, of learning. So thank you for highlighting that, uh, Eshwarya. Uh, our next question is also, we're getting some questions on Facebook also. Our first, how can a first generation lawyer himself establish himself in court? What should be done by the first generation lawyer to get cases? Uh, Sanjay, maybe you'd like to answer that along with another question, uh, which I saw, which is to do with internship and the value of internship, the possibilities of internship. Swati, could you ask that question on internship? And then we'll get Sanjay to answer both. Uh, I just yeah, saw I just... Some yeah i was just um, seeing a question on internship and uh, yeah the yeah. question Sanjay, for you is that uh, uh, yeah in the current scenario how good are the job placements and internship opportunities for a law student that as well as opportunities for a first generation lawyer over to you sanjay yeah first generation lawyers uh, you know what i feel is that certainly as i showed you, ma'am has just said that uh, it is the the first crucial years, three, four years, I must say, are very important. And the key to, you know, succeed is that you have to really do hard work and you have to really work for your client. The interest of your client should be paramount. And of course, your, uh, you know, your, uh, whatever you are advising is very crucial. And it is very, very slow process. You know, you have to take baby steps, as I say. And then uh, certainly with time to come, with your good work, you establish yourself. That's what is process adopted by each one of us. And uh, uh, that is as far as uh, the, the, the setting up of the first generation lawyers are concerned. Second, as far as the internship is concerned, I remember during our days, uh, there was no concept of internship. I'm talking about 25 years back. But now I'm amazed to meet the new generation persons, new generation um, uh, students. They are having huge knowledge. They are, uh, they are really very dedicated. They are very hardworking. They are very uh, good in their, uh, I must say, they're very good in their you know, adaptability, they are good in PR, what not and what all is required in this provision. I would like to, uh, you know, add on here that what are the requirements to become a good lawyer? I think the first and foremost is your hard work. And of course, you know, this is a, a old saying that hard work never goes waste. That is what. Number two, what I feel uh, is that you should be very good in your time management, your delivery, your client satisfaction. That is most important. You know, you should have a nice research skill. Whenever you have to 
uh, and when when you are preparing you are advising some client you should be be absolutely ready with it take time don't meet the client the same day be ready with it for the beginners i am saying for the first generation lawyers i am saying yes there is no doubt about it that uh, people who are not from the first generation second generation or second third generation they have an edge but all the lawyers are not first generation lawyers i would say 80% lawyers are uh, the first generation lawyers so uh, there is no doubt about it with your hard work which if i may say 80% or 90% is your hard work and then the other related things like your spontaneity your good research pleadings pleadings are the backbone so you should make yourself uh, you know so good in pleadings you should the pleading should be such explicit that the judge when they we all know the judges read their file and then they come prepared they should have their mind make up beforehand so pleadings as i say are the backbone of a case so we have to have expertise in pleadings so i feel there are so during these internships whenever you do internships with the lawyers ngos various other places where you do in, uh, internships senior advocates even judges uh, call for internships so in these internships i have seen so many sincere people but of course i have also seen myself there are some people who take these things very lightly these are the opportunities to you there are uh, you will get not many such opportunities there will be people who will not tell you you have to learn from the air this is the most important thing we 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 uh, you know uh, when we were uh, the beginners uh, uh, it was taught to us that please learn from the air how good lawyers are addressing the court how th they are responding to the judges what are the court mannerism everything you have to learn and uh, uh, as uh, last but not the least i feel the lawyers uh, if you want to you are planning to choose law as a profession you know you have to be a multitask person you know you should know how the best thing for a lawyer is learn from the air as ashwarya just said you learn when most of the time when you are in the corridor of the court very rightly she said from each and every person you learn even you learn from your court clerk just see you know the beginner begin begin lawyer should spend at least i say two weeks with the court clerk see how the filings are done see how uh, the cases are made all those things are very very important otherwise people will make use of you they will misuse your uh, this thing they right very things so from each and every person you have to learn you have to see ob observe and yes i think i think i was just coming to that word the power of observation which you enunciated on is uh, uh, is never can never be understated in fact in every single walk of life particularly in law which requires a very meticulous approach to things so observation you know uh, assumes a very different and a very more, far more critical uh, uh, you know advantage well uh, next question coming up thank you for that sanjay very articulate yes. indeed as always Uh, next question please swati next question is from sheetal and she wants to know apart from legal what are the other opportunities after llb and some tips on how to become a successful lawyer well, we'll get uh, the two successful lawyers uh, with us uh, to answer the the second one but i'll get uh, uh, yagdik ma'am who's been extremely successful in her pre education stint as a lawyer as well uh, to answer the first one and and that is apart from legal what are the other opportunities after llb uh, available to a student that they can in the beginning actually i said so i will recapitalize that and yes. then i will add further uh, which at that time i missed was that every corporate nowadays corporates are so many after the amendment of 2013 company law there are so many new corporates single persons corporate partnership firms so everywhere law officers are required be it laboratory which is making medicine or be it 
any kind of organization their law officers are required in the government also where laws are to be drafted law officers are required in every department of the government law officers are required then one new thing which is in pipeline is that every government department is now planning to have adr officer so as to see to it that we have our impending litigation of that particular ministry or department uh, can be settled out of the court because section 89 in civil procedure code has added a provision of referring the case to the alternative dispute resolution so alternative dispute uh, dispute resolution is one more thing which is growing up very well then aspects of legal services this uh, ideology of legal services for which grants etc are usually being given on international level on national level by the government to run the uh, activities where free and competent legal services are given these are all the aspect then uh, this days every high court judge is given one legal assistant so job there is also a beautiful job every uh, different kind of law schools are running its own magazine for for which editors are required uh, all the popular magazines wanted someone to make head notes even for head note people are employing then writing law book is another one additional uh, area wherein there is too much of rush nowadays Uh, because uh, law has become the first choice of so many students and because of that only so many law schools have come up if you see the history of last decade you will see that many law schools have come up and uh, many competent law schools have come up so writing law books that has also been added then uh, there is a law commission then there is consumer redressal forums at all these places uh, the people are now given appointments uh, in some of the state it is given on temporary basis but it is being given so all these new areas are every day developing over and above as i have said before adr practice law teaching research in law uh, then editing in law then journalism for a uh, field of law or for the cases because these days because of awareness and uh, spread education among the people uh, frequently matters are becoming media trial so previously once in a while only if it is a terrorist case or something like that then only it was becoming media trial now it's very common that anything smallest issue suddenly it will become a media trial so even if someone makes a small red petition that this investigation be given to cbi it will become a media on in the evening you will see debate on that so these days actually at all such places also, also the person who are young who can do proper research are required i had a uh, talk with many high court judges and they are more than satisfied they says that at times more than the lawyer who is in fact battling the case the legal assistant sitting beside them they are making giving such a research uh, material which is helping them in writing the judgments so now the days have changed so there are many scopes nothing much to worry but i will not uh, speak in air therefore i will repeat what aishwarya has said that law is a field where hard work has only master key you just cannot think of sitting in ac chamber enjoying and suddenly you will be offered dignity etc uh, when we reached up to the bench as a uh, since i am a retired judge so i remember those struggling days we were also briefless lawyers when we become a new lawyer we were briefless because you need someone to trust you you need someone to give you brief and then after things can be developed now this one more thing very important which should not be missed from my mind that is everywhere there is a state legal services authority being run by government respective government state government i mean central level there is nalsa so both these are 
manning one panel and there is a payment and junior lawyers are being employed there and from that payment though for a party it is free and competent legal services but the lawyers are being paid another aspect is that we have injected an idea of front office in every court in india and there at the front office legal consultant are given salary so even these days juniors if they are vigilant if they are uh, really very much eager to learn if they really wanted to make research and they really love library uh, there is no difficulty but you must be ready ever to work hard you can only say you may be retired judge or you may be retired supreme court judge but humbly you will have to say i am a student of law the only difference is i am agent student of law and one who is coming is a junior student of law that's it every one because as i have written in my intro learning has no end that's my watchword and that's my motto which i strongly believe so the, there are scopes and scope that's my answer Jyoti, mm -hmm. I'm just listening to you. It makes me regret why I didn't study law. For instance, that is my my first reaction on that. But what I did study was a bit of journalism. And since you mentioned journalism twice in your uh, in your dissemination, the first was about the opportunities of legal journalism. I completely agree with that because let me tell you, in my thirty year career in journalism, if there's one aspect, uh, you know, of a journalist we found missing was a legal journalist. Very difficult to find. The second one was a business journalist. Thankfully, I, I was I became one. Uh, but the but the point you also made was about the similarity in the media by trial. I think that is a very very astute point. Uh, you took a crack at journalists also. I appreciate that. But it was a smart point that you made. Important to understand is that you know there's so many similarities between uh, between uh, you know a lawyer and a journalist. Uh, both of them you know make money out of words. Interpretation, interpreting words, and sometimes, of course, it's used. Well, unfortunately, sometimes, or more often than not, at least I can say, in the field of journalism, it's misused. Uh, but both give impart a sense of learning, as well as earning. So I think it's it's uh, it's a very very uh, valid point you make. It is close to me, so I need to react to that. But by and large, the options you gave were a plenty, and I'm sure that's it's really encouraging for anybody who wants to study law. I think it's almost become a must now. Uh, so thank you for highlighting that. I had an interesting question, uh, you know, on uh, what is required to uh, to become a successful lawyer. Now I I possibly because this is a point of opinion, so I'm going to ask each of you of our panelists to give me one word you think that's required to become a successful journalist. That way we'll have a variety for everybody. And I think uh, instead of having one answer from one. So if I could go across, starting with uh, with you, Ashwarya, one word required for being a successful journalist? Passion and compassion. I have to give two. Great. Passion and compassion. Vishrut, what's your choice? One word to become a successful lawyer. Uh, I would just add to Ashwarya, ma'am, along with passion and compassion, you have to have dispassion. So you have to separate yourself from the clients and the judge and, you know, like just try to do what's right. Well... Exactly what I said is the use and the misuse of words, but here you're seeing the use of words in, in, in its variety. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the English language of providing us this variety. Passion, compassion, dispassion. Wonderful. Ripon, what's your one word for being a successful lawyer? So perseverance. Perseverance. Uh, absolutely. Perseverance. We heard a lot about hard work. So thank you for bringing that up, Ripon. Uh, you, you know, perseverance. So we've got passion, compassion, dispassion, perseverance. Uh, uh, what's yours, uh, uh, Sanjay? What's your word? I think uh, I will repeat my word, which is hard work. Okay. Hard work and uh, uh, good PR ability, I would say. Wonderful. So, so uh, now I'm almost forgetting what those words are. Uh, passion, compassion, dispassion, uh, perseverance, hard work, PR ability. Uh, Sandeep, what's yours? The final word with you. Well, uh, if I have a choice of uh, choosing one, then I would say a lawyer has to be a person from legal background, has to be a very good listener. Mm -hmm. So listening skills is one. And if I have the permission to add another... Only one I more. Think <laughs> has to be a good learner. <laughs> yes, good learner. 
wonderful, a good learner and a good listener. And, and a little while back, we talked about uh, has to have the power of observation. Uh, you know, I must tell you that my one of my strongest lives learning is that in any field that you choose, if you are able to observe, the greatest education you can get is from observation. Uh, so I encourage each and every of you students. Chetan, I would like to, I would like to. You know, on, on this webinar, but we've got a plethora of questions. I request all of you to patiently be with us for the next 20 minutes because we know we'll shoot this by about half an hour uh, and we'll run this up to seven uh, because it'll be a bit of a shame if you're not able to answer uh, questions of our young students, of our aspirant lawyers. Uh, Sanjay, the question next I'm getting on Facebook is, uh, should we go for practice in court uh, after completing our LLB or go in for any other sector? Please suggest the best path. Sanjay, over to you. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, first, I want to add one thing to what Ashwarya has just said. I just few days back, it was not uh, never possible to do during the normal time. You know, I appeared in the same day in Mumbai High Court, Chennai High Court, and Delhi High Court. I appeared in these three forums, and uh, that was impossible. So that is what uh, we have seen in this era. As far as uh, this question, uh, whether to join directly into, into the law profession or do some other courses, uh, what I feel is that uh, it's, it's entirely, uh, uh, it's entirely the passion which is uh, most important. And of course, those words which we, uh, all the panelists were uh, uh, saying that, yes, if you have a passion for litigation, you want to do uh, it and uh, you want to really work so it is i would advise as quick as possible whenever you have you know you have to begin start from day one there is no you know uh, and as as uh, josna ma'am has said that it should inculcate from the college days you know you should participate in moot court you should participate in the best thing which i would suggest to all the students here is interact with your teachers which people, uh, which students are not doing much. I would, I, uh, you know, because a lot of students are there. Please interact with your teachers. Make them your mentor. You need mentors for succeeding. You know, the, it might be possible that he might guide you the best possible, not in the best possible way. But yes, if you go to a teacher, I am sure about it. The teacher will always guide you in the best possible manner. So that's what I feel. And right. uh, 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 you can start from your college days if you have to go for the litigation. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, 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 questions continue. Thank you, Sanjay, for that. Questions keep continuing. Ashwarya, I know you've got to go somewhere. So I'd like a closing comment from you before you leave. Uh, thank you for joining us today on this special webinar. Your closing comments on the webinar by edumate.tv and what you've heard by the offerings of Adamus, which I might add, are a plentiful. Well, uh, it has been an absolute uh, privilege and an honor for me to be here interacting with all of you this evening. I did not realize it was going to be such an amazing galaxy of uh, experts from a, you know different fields of uh, of law and otherwise uh, discussing their experiences. And I think uh, it's almost like uh, you know this is this has been like a monthan. We have had uh, multiple disciplines and different areas uh, speaking out there experiential learning in a way. So I think it's been most wonderful. Congratulations and kudos to you. Uh, my really sincere commendations uh, for really uh, bringing this together, I'm sure. And with the, you know, being this being available on the uh, on the web for uh, people to watch thereafter also, I think it's going to bring a lot of clarity for a lot of young minds who feel that, uh, you know, they don't have adequate uh, information or knowledge to really make their choices. Um, so my parting line is going to be, I uh, have been a first generation lawyer. And for me, I have felt I was, I was an accidental lawyer. I did, this was not my first choice. I became a lawyer because I failed a pilot aptitude test. But I can tell you that if I was to live my life all over again, this would be my first choice. And uh, the best thing that I feel as a lawyer is the ability to touch lives. You know, when clients come to us, they don't just give us pieces and their files they live a little bit of their worry with us. 
and that ability you know we we are actors in a, in many way we get to role play these amazingly incredible people and in their every, everyday lives and you know uh, of course there are there, there are huge landmark cases that one gets an experience and an opportunity to represent but the everyday stories of you know small uh, stories from small towns which are not you know uh, huge stories also the impact that you have and it's it's not about how much money you make it's about how much impact you have in people's life is what matters and it makes you a better person it's a beautiful journey in self discovery to be a litigating lawyer thank you so very much well, thank you so much for for ending off that way ashwar a beautiful words as a, as a send off you just put in so much of sense sensibility and might i add sensitivity into this noble profession thank you uh, for that and thank you for joining us uh, today well questions just still coming up we've still got 15 minutes to go thank you for everything else everybody else for staying back patiently uh, because we must complete these list of questions i think it's my duty uh, the next question coming in is uh, uh, from uh, shivam satyam who says sir in high court senior lawyer cases speedy listing but in new uh, lawyer case position just reverse how to manage it uh, sanjay would you like to answer i, I couldn't get i'm sorry what was the question i couldn't get Maybe, it i'm not able to understand perhaps shivam you like to rephrase that uh, uh, that question a little bit uh, before we go along uh, our next uh, question coming from you swati could you, over to you for that yes chetan our next question is from pragya komal and she wants to know what are the steps taken to solve the problem of lawyers especially in lower courts who function case to case basis for their income during this covid 19 period hmm that's an interesting part particularly in, yeah. in this dna yeah. sanjay yes you can answer that then i'll get joshna ma'am for her words as well as vishrut he's he's been a quiet passive listener thus far yes all right so as far as the, the this is a big problem i must say we have seen that uh, there are a lot of lot many lawyers who 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 work on day to day basis we have seen this as uh, uh, during the course of discussion we have seen that there are n number of places where lawyers appear where black coat people are appearing there are in in delhi if i may say other than courts quasi judicial bodies administrative tribunals x y z so many of them are there but the the only thing this is a area of pain where there are a big number of lawyers are there who uh, who basically earn on daily basis they don't have a, a recurring clientele that is a pain that is a problem and that is the reason uh, about few days back a petition is being filed in supreme court as well as in delhi high court and uh, also uh, i want to inform uh, as far as the delhi is concerned in delhi uh, our bar association has given a very though it was a meager amount very small amount to the lawyers whosoever has applied for it they have distributed that money and uh, we, we we see in a recent past i have seen that few mishaps have also taken place so certainly i think uh, uh, people who are there in, at the at the helm of riyam they are working on it yes there is a need to help these lawyers who are because as a matter of fact all of us know that if you are a lawyer as per the rules regulations you can't do anything else you have to stick to only law profession that is one thing uh, which is a message to all the new uh, students and who want to join law you have to be very uh, uh, you know um, uh, ready to accept the challenges that's what i say initially the 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 initial 2 3 years are really tough but certainly if you work hard sky is the limit there are uh, one 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 more line i know uh, i am taking much time but one more line once uh, somebody has said that there are so many lawyers how you will manage but answer was that all those so many lawyers are at the at the at the at the lower fora at the lower fora means they are not if you have have to reach at the top you will find very few lawyers are there so that's that's what i feel so uh, that's, that's uh, and uh, certainly some something will come out for them right thank you for that uh, uh, sanjay uh, uh, thank you for reassuring our Our, uh, our student, that question. I've got a very interesting question, and you even got some compliments on uh, on how the program is being conducted and bringing clarity to the students. So thank you for that. Uh, 
this question is, is, is more intriguing than the prior one, which talked about how does one become a successful lawyer? This one, I think Vishnuth and Ripon, you're the best people to answer this. It's not asking how does one become a successful lawyer? It's asking how does one become a successful law student? Uh, it's a little different, very interesting. Wish with your answer, and Ripon, I'd like you to answer that as well, please. Wish if you can unmute yourself. Thank you. Yes. Um, well, how to become a, a good law student is actually something which, uh, you know, um, uh, starts at a very young age. It's not like, you know, when you're in class 11 or class 12, you suddenly decide, okay, I'm going to become a lawyer now, which is what usually happens, you know. Uh, it's a gradual process. Like, you know, if you see a small child and you see them like uh, answering a lot of questions or like being very like extrovert, you might say like, I should have give the example, oh, he's going to be a lawyer or she's going to be a lawyer, you know. So it's actually a state of mind that a person has, you know. Um, like like uh, so many of the other panelists have mentioned, like the demeanor, communication skills, listening skills, all of these things, passion, dispassion, all of that, they all account in becoming a good lawyer. Uh, but fundamentally, what we must understand is that uh, the, the, the primary quality that is required to be a good law student is altruism. Because the, 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 the primary role of a lawyer is to serve society. Um, you know, um, uh, because like, uh, um, as we know, that uh, law has become very much of a, you know, like a, a, a purview of the elite. So, you know, you have only a few people and even like Sanjay sir said, you know, like at the top, it's kind of lonely uh, when it comes to the legal profession, uh, you know, so very few people are actually able to like convert their passion and, you know, convert their interest into a successful career. So in order to do that, we have to start at a very young age. We have to focus and develop our communication skills, listening skills. And then we have to have a spirit of altruism, spirit of compassion in us so that we can become good law students. A good law student is one who doesn't want to excel for themselves. They want to excel for society. They want to help the entire society. So I think that's where we have to start. Brilliant point. I think the altruism point was brilliant. I, 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 if I may yes. just add to that, like I said before, all of this is fundamentally found in the NEP now. So I think like that the NEP is going to be a perfect, like, you know, sort of like a launching pad for uh, what will make a good uh, law student and then a good lawyer in the future. Wonderful. Thank you for, uh, for highlighting the aspect of, uh, of altruism and philanthropy and uh, thereby enhancing the nobility of uh, uh, the lawyer's case. Ripon, what's your uh, uh, understanding of what should what makes a successful law student? So uh, the thing is the same thing I will repeat, but then uh, I want to say that uh, uh, communication and speaking uh, skill can be uh, developed during your uh, studies like uh, by taking part in activities such as mooting or uh, general public speaking, that might help, sir. And another thing is analytical skill. See, both the study and uh, 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 both the study and practice, like uh, uh, mooting skills, involve absorbing uh, large quantities of information than having to uh, distill it into something manage manageable and uh, uh, logical. So at times, uh, there will be uh, more than uh, uh, one reasonable conclusion or more than one precedent applicable to resolving uh, a situation. So I can say that that particular analytical skill should be there and uh, uh, the research skill should be there. And, uh, with, and at the same time, you have to be logical also. You have to be logically, you have to think, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you cannot... Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, that particular that you want to uh, become uh, whatever you want to become, that might uh, that might be difficult for you. So this is the main thing, sir. Good communication skill is most important, and the analytical uh, thing. Point well taken. Uh, logical uh, analysis as well as communication. Uh, that's that should be the bread and butter uh, for a good law student. Thank you for that. Uh, next question. I think this is. Uh, it's directed, not only indirectly, but directly at you, Dutsta ma'am. What is the proper manner of judgment reading? Now, what a better question you can get for a judge, a former judge, at that. What is the best, proper manner of judgment reading? Explain that to us. Now. The most proper manner of reading any judgment is, first of all, reading the facts. Then after, we have to understand 
that during the adjudicating process the judges will have certain observation now those observation do are related to facts of the case and the law applicable in that particular dispute but those are not very important there are certain principles which a judge will propound so the principles which have been propounded are the chief principle material which uh, the person who is reading law should remember an entire judgment is for that so when the head notes are being prepared those who are expert in preparing head note they find out dot thing that is uh, uh, from my entire decision there will be some principal point based on which i have decided the entire matter sometime it is interpretation of some section of some one of you wonderful speakers for all that you said i'll go across to each of you for 20 seconds not more than that uh, you know for your closing comments on what you felt about this webinar brought to you by edumate.tv and powered by the adamus university sanjay first you quickly 20 seconds please couldn't get it i'm sorry your, your closing comments 20 seconds oh, on right. what you felt about this webinar brought to you by edumate excellent TV. is the word yes excellent is the word and uh, as a matter of fact i'm one of your fans so excellent performance and very nice and uh, uh, good to know many things about adamus and uh, of course uh, this medium of adumate uh, is is really dynamic and i wish all the best to all of you it was an excellent platform i loved uh, i have really enjoyed it thank you very much uh, chetan for taking me in thank thank you sanjay what about you vishnu just unmute yourself please thank you sorry sir Mr. Tilak to unmute yourself please. Yes, thank you. 